Hey, welcome back to the channel. I um, am kind of shocked at myself that I did this again, but I actually forgot as I trip over my tail wheel. Um, I forgot to um, bring an SD card again. I stuck them in the little pocket in my jeans thinking I was going to get them here so I would have an extra one here and I believe they're in the laundry um, at home so I got to capture those before uh, before they get washed um, but fortunately I have a phone so that means a video can still happen and I can still do some work um, these two processes are kind of tied together now I mean the video the building it's all one thing so it's difficult to think about building without the video especially since my objective is to show you as much of this process as I can. So I don't want you to miss anything important. Um, so yeah, so we'll do it with the phone. It'll be a little choppy, but uh, hey, we'll, uh, we'll get through it. So, all right. Uh, so I got my aluminum um, right here, my 05, I'm using 050, and I'm gonna use that to, uh, I'll use the 050 to make the bracket for the uh, uh, for the gas glader. And I've got the fitting that I need to go on that. So I'm gonna get that stuff out. We'll kind of get set up and then uh, and we'll continue. All right. All right, so I got the fitting. Uh, I got the fitting that I needed here. And what's interesting about this is um, I can I can hand tighten it like up to a certain point which is about um, about there. And I am about 85 degrees, or I take that back, I'm about 175 degrees from where I need to be as I need it pointing this way. I'm not actually sure, once I get it hand tight, how far with the pipe thread, I should be able to torque that. Um, if I can go the rest of the distance, I know at this point it gets kind of, uh, uh, it gets kind of tight and squeaky. Not, not like squeaky tight, like, well, I did say tight and squeaky, but not squeaky tight like you're over tightening because I'm hand tightening, but you can kind of hear it squeak a little bit. So I'm wondering, with the sealer, um, probably we'll use the, uh, Loctite, I believe it's 560. Um, I'll have to double check that, but to get this to rotate um, all the way where I need it, and I don't believe that you want to use the sealer, um, you want to use the sealer to hold it in a position when you're actually fairly loose, um, not tight there really at all. I can easily move it. So I have to figure that out. I'll do some research and figure that out. But the thing we were interested in, and the reason we had this, was we needed to know <clears throat> roughly how far we need to come out away from the gas escalator so that we have clearance to get, well, number one, clearance for the tube, and then number two, we need clearance. We will, we will have plenty of clearance for our, for our nuts and uh, things to come through here because this actually sticks out um, about an an inch and a quarter will clear it by probably an eighth of an inch. So, so I would say somewhere around um, an inch and three eighths would be the right spacing for the bracket. So there's plenty of room for the fitting, um, and then there, there will automatically be plenty of room for for everything else uh, to fit in there. So put that away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to make a, um, uh, just a template. So I started out with um, this piece, which you saw me, which matches the back side of this. Let me get this out of here. You can see that. Matches the back side of that. And uh, it's got the holes and everything for what we need to clear. So we'll use that and I'll just make a template to take some measurements from and uh, uh, then we'll be able to transfer it to our aluminum and get that, uh, get that cut out. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll start with this piece and, and I will, um, uh, I'll need an inch and three eighths, plus I'll add 
maybe another um, eighth of an inch. So we'll say we're going an inch and a half because the bends are actually going to reduce that by a little bit. Um, so let's go an inch and a half overall. And then we'll have the same size shape again. So we have this uh, inch and a half and then this and we'll have um, we'll have the full the full piece. So if we take this, it is um, it is uh, inch and a half plus a little. So that's three. So four and a half. So we need uh, four and a half. Inch and a half, inch and a half, three, plus an inch and a half, four and a half, four and a half by two, four and a half by two and a half. Gets us what we need. So first thing I'll do is uh, on here, I'll draw out uh, uh, four and a half by two and a half. And then we will, uh, we will go to the next step. So four and a half puts us here. And uh, two and a half at that location puts us right here. Of course, you can't see that, but. All right, and then I'm going to go cut this out uh, so that I can use this as a template on here for what we need to uh, cut. And we'll also use this to center punch for our holes. Um, and we'll put uh, two mounting holes on the other side, which are gonna be located uh, somewhere in the middle. So I'll just kind of line that up. Okay, now I've got this piece uh, made. I can actually mark, I can mark the one side. Um, And then I'm going to take the center punch and I'm just going to go right through the cardboard and punch the aluminum. All right, and I'm going to use my other two marks, these two marks right here, and I'll come over here and I'll actually punch the other side. <clears throat> now we'll take it to the take it to the bandsaw and uh, we'll cut it off and we will um, we will go uh, we'll go from there So I got, um, uh, hold on here, I, 
got <clears throat> I just put a couple bolts in there just to make sure that everything uh, everything fits good and um, now I'm just gonna make a mark uh, where we're gonna where we're gonna end up bending this and basically it's uh, actually I don't even have to have to make a mark we got to go make the piece we're gonna use to bend it and we're gonna make it to the size of our of this so it'll be um, it'll be an inch and a half by um, an inch and a half by two and a half. It can be longer than two and a half, but it needs to be um, an inch and a half uh, wide. Um, actually, an inch and three eighths wide. Sorry, the uh, inch and three eighths was our original measurement. We went a little bit over because the bends are going to take up a little bit of room. So, um, an inch and three eighths. So we're going to make a block that's uh, an inch and three eighths that will allow us to line up a mark and use that with just a slight radius on it to uh, bend the aluminum over. So um, now I will uh, grab a piece of two by four here and we'll cut that up uh, how we need it. Um, so I'll need to use every tool I have. This one, I've used this one, I've used this one. I need to use that one, I've used that one and I've used that one. So um, it's definitely a a lot of tools for that, but hey, we want to get it right. So, okay, um, I'm going to get a two by four. I'm going to cut myself a block and then we can, uh, we can jump to the bending. All right. All right. So here's what we got going on. We, uh, we cut this to, um, to an inch and three eighths, which is the size I wanted. Um, because by the time we do the bends, we're going to end up at an inch and a half. And then, uh, I just made a center line on this inch and three eighths part so that we can align the center of our bracket and then we'll square it up to the edge. But I can align it here. Um, I have a mark on both so we can just get that aligned. And then all we have to do is um, clamp it in place and then bend each of these sides over. So um, that's the next step. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna deburr the holes and I'm gonna just lightly sand uh, and smooth out the edges um, it'll be easier to do when it's flat like this, so I'm going to do that first, and then we'll, uh, we'll get this clamped on there and get it bent. Okay. All right, so we're just going to line it up, uh, line it up on the center line here where I have it, and, uh, that's right where we want it. And then we're going to just take our, going to take our square here and we're going to center it up. We're going to make sure it's well, it's already centered. We're going to make sure it's square. So, um, so that looks good right there. And then, so, so we can easily get back to that. I'm going to uh, make a line um, here, so I don't lose track. So I have a line on both sides, like so. Got a line there, line there. And now we'll get a clamp and we'll get this in place. <clears throat> All right, so now I've got it, I've just got it clamped here. And since it's, uh, uh, it's just off just a touch here, I would say I've got to rotate it ever so slightly this direction. Um, And I could always throw the square on it again just to make sure that we've got it good. It'd be great if you could see it, but you can't, but you can trust me. Yeah, we're still square. So now I'm just going to take this part right here um, with my fingers and I'm just going to bend it over. And then we'll actually use a, we'll use a clamp on it here in a second to make sure we get it bent all the way. And then we'll, uh, we'll jump to the other side and we'll do that one. All right, so there's plenty of, uh, plenty of clearance for the hose. Um, I may have to use one size shorter um, on the screws just to make sure, but I still think there's the hose won't interfere with the screw at all. Um, 
it's interesting on this particular nylon screw I see some of the nylon started coming out so that that's a fail on that but um, I've never seen that push out like that before but anyway um, yeah so uh, now the uh, screws on the bottom will be down below no need to worry about that and so now all we have to do is um, figure out where um, in the cockpit we want this to go and I'll uh, show you how we're going to do that. Alright, so the, uh, the carburetor, um, the inlet for the, uh, for the fuel um, actually ends up just below this member right here. And uh, I'll show you a picture of a, of a plane that that's mounted on here so you can see what I'm referencing. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer that line, uh, that distance um, down into kind of this uh, cockpit area so I can figure out, I'm gonna use the, uh, the top of the fuselage as the reference point. And then I can measure down from the top um, inside here to figure out exactly where uh, we're gonna be. And I just, I wanna be forward of this member here and We'll um, just take a look at, at what we think that looks like. So, all right, so I'm gonna hop in after I uh, grab the gascalator just to try this out. And first we'll take that measurement. We'll just set that, set that down there so we can see it for a minute. And uh, get a tape measure here all right so so the plan is that our carburetor inlet is going to be about 14 inches from the top surface of the fuselage so actually, I just went and took another look at that, and it's actually in line with that member. So, um, so that measurement is actually going to be something like 13 and a half, roughly um, 13 and a half, 13 and a quarter, 13 and a quarter. So, what we're trying to achieve is um, the 13 and a quarter is going to be where this outlet is. Um, where the, uh, the fuel level that it's running, um, what I want it to do is run level with the carb and where the uh, fuel comes out of the, out of the tanks, out of the, out of the tanks back here, what this is gonna do is this is gonna slope down from here down to the inlet on the gascalator um, so that everything is traveling downhill and um, I want the gascalator to be um, just the inlet portion of the gascalator and, and the outlet to be just above um, the uh, distance to the uh, to the fuel there. So, um, so then everything will come out of the tanks and will everything will have a slope down toward the uh, down toward the carburetor. So, um, all of that to be said, um, I am. Let me take this measurement one more time. Um, it is uh, 13 and a quarter. And so I think we will go, uh, um, a half an inch, we'll give it a quarter inch of foot slope. We'll do, um, we'll do a half an inch lower or yeah, we'll do a uh, half an inch higher. <laughs> so instead of 13 and a quarter, we're actually gonna be about uh, 12 and three quarters. So that's where our gas waiter will mount um, from the top surface here. So I'm gonna go inside and uh, we'll check that out. This uh, also gives me an opportunity to check out my pedal location, which is actually, uh, actually quite good. So, um,
it, uh, if I get my feet on there and my knees are just slightly bent, so I feel really good about that. Um, got plenty of room, plenty of room there. And uh, so the, what we're gonna do over here is the gascalator is going to be 12 and three quarter inches down from the top deck. And let's see, we've got uh, one inch, so 11 and three quarter from here. All right, so what I'm learning as I'm uh, sitting here is uh, just kind of studying this. If it's up here, um, what I wanted to do is I'm going to put a I'm going to put a fuel shutoff um, coming out of the outlet right here. The fuel shutoff is going to be right here on the other side of it, so it'll just be easy to just reach down and turn that off uh, from from here. But the problem is if I'm forward of this. Let me get this where you can see this. If I'm forward of here, uh, it my leg is at my shin. My my calf is actually is actually hitting it. So um, I think what I'm actually going to have to do is I'm going to have to pull. Uh, I'm going to have to pull back a little bit, and I'm going to have to be closer to where my seat is so that here I'm not interfering with the uh, uh, I'm not interfering at all with where the fuel shutoff is I've got plenty of leg room to move around and I shouldn't be I shouldn't be at all disturbed by it so I really think what has to happen is this gas escalator actually needs to come all the way back um, much closer to where I'm sitting here um, just on the a little bit forward of my seat and then this will then we'll have we'll have an angle from uh, from back here where the fuel comes out of the wing straight down to the gas escalator and then we'll go slightly sloped um, about a quarter inch a foot from here uh, actually we'll have to raise it up another quarter of an inch so we can be a quarter inch a foot um, sloping from here forward so all right, so that's what I'm thinking. Uh, so, so we made it that far, <laughs> and uh, what I'm going to uh, what I'm going to do is um, uh, just I'll put a little more thought into that. Make sure I still feel comfortable uh, that that's the right the right move. And if it's right here, um, there really is nothing else um, nothing else in this area. Uh, nothing else in this area right here and I, I do believe that I won't interfere with it um, as much if it's there as I will if it's uh, if it's further forward so um, yeah I keep moving the phone like I'm pointing it at what I'm looking at but it's not working out very well so uh, so I have to get a level line here for the screw holes so that I can make sure the gas escalator is level in level flight and uh, level with the top surface of the fuselage anyway. And I'll figure out exactly where to put it. I'll probably have to throw my uh, seat in here and take a look at that. You can tell I'm stalling just because I'm enjoying sitting here, right? <laughs> it's, it's, uh... <laughs> I'm like, I'd rather just sit here than say anything. But anyway, I'm just enjoying sitting here with my feet on the uh, on the pedals. I'm not putting any pressure on them because there's no nothing, no tension against them. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. Anyway, this I think this will work out. Um, I think this will work out fine right here. It'll be uh, it'll be low enough, low enough where. Uh, it should not interfere. It should not interfere with uh, anything. 
and I just have a I don't I just have a concern that I don't want the um, I don't want the gascalator to be I don't want the fuel to have to travel back uphill to get to the carburetor so I'm trying to make sure everything stays in a downhill configuration all the way from the wing to the carb um, so that I can get the best fuel flow possible now of course I will have the I will have the backup um, uh, facet pump, um, which will be actually installed um, further forward, uh, more on the uh, kind of the back side of the firewall. And I may actually uh, may consider putting it um, on the outside of the firewall, but it seemed like it was going to be easy enough to keep it on the inside. Um, but I don't want to interfere with that either. But I don't think my feet will. I'm plenty and plenty to the inside here if I put the um, the size that's much lower profile um, in how it's configured so it doesn't take up this much room it only takes up about that much room in width wise so that could be anywhere here and it would be plenty far out of my way so uh, yeah all right so that's uh that's going to be it for me today. I will, uh, I will think about this and see exactly where I want to put this, and then we will, uh, um, we'll go from, uh, we'll go from there and get this mounted. I am going to put a uh, small block, so I'm actually adding about another eighth of an inch of material, um, because when I countersink the screws from the outside of the fuselage, I need some material on the inside to act as a backer, uh, so. So I will um, put an eighth of an inch piece behind this um, to provide that. So that'll work fine. And uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. You know I uh, always appreciate um, the time that you spend watching and following along. And uh, hey, I'll, uh, I'll catch you later. I think I'm just going to sit here for a while.